United States Liberator bombers and Lightning P-38s attack a Japanese base off Bougainville in the Solomon Islands. attacks, timed with American landings at Empress Augusta Bay and in the Gilbert Islands, are winning many new vital bases from the Japs. Tons of supplies, fuel oil and airplane gasoline are brought in as the Americans establish airports less than 200 miles from enemy bases. fuel dump is hit and set ablaze. But work on the landing field goes right ahead. In a matter of hours, Navy construction battalions have the airport ready for American planes to launch new attacks on the Japanese in the South Pacific. Canada's big railway shops build some of the world's most powerful locomotives. India needs huge engines like these to haul allied war supplies to fighting fronts in Burma. So here is the first of a fleet of locomotives being specially built in Canada for India's wide 66-inch gauge track. Too big to run on standard rails, the locomotives are dismantled and crated for shipment overseas. testing the boilers, they make sure everything's ready so Indian engineers can put them into operation immediately upon arrival. Using assembly line production methods, the Canadian shops are turning out a locomotive a day. And here comes number one, right on schedule. Acadia, first United States Army hospital ship of the war, arrives at an Atlantic port from Africa and Italy. Plainly marked with the Red Cross symbol of mercy, the Acadia carries only those cases requiring hospital care en route. Aboard are several hundred American casualties of war. During the invasion of Europe, the Acadia shuttled between Africa and the Italian mainland, removing the injured from the beaches of Salerno and Naples. Battalions of medical workers with litters await the docking of the ship. Back from the war. Each soldier is sent to a government hospital as near as possible to his home. Army nurses who have seen action at the front, all proud to have served in the great cause. One of the nurses is herself carried ashore. They gave their best and they're glad to be home. Men of the United States Navy serving in Australian waters and their soldier brothers in arms take over the Sydney sports ground for a truly American sports classic, an Army-Navy football game. 35,000 are here for the contest and whether or not the Australians understand the game, they cheer just as heartily for one team as the other.
rougher, more spectacular than rugby or soccer, football, Yankee style, is something new to this continent. The girls seem to have caught the spirit too. Gala entertainment for Americans serving the United Nations thousands of miles from home. General Eisenhower, named to command the gathering Allied invasion forces, surveys the Italian front with General Clark, 5th Army commander. In the mountains of central Italy, he observes artillery fire blasting the way toward Casino. Cautiously, American troops enter the battered town of Ligoni. Hard hit by shell fire, Ligoni has just seen the last of German occupation. The Nazis were forced to abandon the town in the face of the Allied advance. The natives return to welcome the soldiers of the United Nations. are the bombs, and these are some of the gallant flyers, now writing history in the skies over Nazi Europe. Men of the 8th U.S. Air Force, men of the RAF, Dutch, Poles, Belgians, all eager to point that nose at Hitler's war planes and war plans. From scores of airdromes all over Britain, huge fleets take off on daily schedule to rendezvous at some predetermined Nazi objective. In England, expert women auxiliaries of the Interceptor Command chart each mission, know the location of every Allied flight. This is United Nations organization bringing the war home to the Nazis. Through a barrage of anti-aircraft fire, they hold fast upon their course. Now for the zero hour, cargoes ready to unload. Today's objective, cleverly camouflaged Nazi installations in the wooded area below. Cameras record indisputable proof that even in daylight, the Allies are dropping their bombs upon the heart of Nazi Europe. won airfields in southern Italy, from behind the ever-tightening ring of Soviet steel, from bases across the English Channel, Allied air power is pounding the crumbling walls of Hitler's fortress. Here, sweeping in mast high, Boston bombers roar over the rooftops of occupied France. The welcome drone of their powerful motors bringing renewed hope to an enslaved people. Yes, the Allies are coming, again and again. This is their message for Nazis everywhere. <laughs> 